Hi, I'm Tom. I bought this Mahindra Max XLT three years ago, almost to the date, and I've got 215 hours on it. I did a review, uh, I think, when I first got it, initial review, and this is just kind of a follow-up at 200 plus hours. So I'm going to tell you everything that I like, what I don't like, and what I would do again if I had the opportunity. So stick around. If this is your first time watching, please hit, a, hit the like button. And I'd also appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss any future episodes. So the Max XLT is a 26 horsepower Mitsubishi made tractor. Made in Mitsubishi, Japan. This tractor is a hydrostatic. I believe that you can get this in a shuttle shift, though I've never seen one. I'm told you can use the turning brakes with the cruise control. And I'll try it, but I, for some reason, feel like when you touch the brakes, it uh, kicks the cruise control out. So we'll test that. This tractor is very similar to a Kubota B-Series, and I feel like the quality is as good. Uh, this one has industrial tires. You can get turf or agricultural tires. I generally use this tractor for loader work, and I find that industrial tires really hold up to the stress uh, of, the, of the weight. This tractor will easily pick up a 3x4 round bale. I've got a bale spear for it. This is a Mahindra set of forks. They're about 4 feet deep and it'll it'll pick up just about anything I want it to. It has the grill guard built in. Very easy to get hood into the, the engine compartment. There's a little pull down right here. So you just pop this down and pull this up. Hood, metal, there's a little bit of plastic here. You know, this is, feels like metal. So it's, it's mostly metal. It's not plastic, it's not gonna, fall apart when the sun hits it like some of the tractors do. Steel hydraulic lines. I've seen people uh, complain about just hoses. Well, there's steel hydraulic lines here. One thing I like about this, the screen comes straight up and down here and that needs to be cleaned periodically. Otherwise your engine will overheat on you. Easy to get to the battery. Routine maintenance. Very easy to put the loader on, take it off, power steering, really tilt wheel, integrated joystick. So when you take the loader off, you don't lose your valve. You still got the valve. Super comfortable seat. These little toolboxes, you know, nothing to write home about. They're not that great. It has the, the road lights. One thing about these um, Mahindra tractors compared to a lot of the other ones is the, the stance. These really sit out wide. These tractors, it's hard to see it, you know, on video, but they really do set out a lot wider than you'd think. Uh, the, the John Deere I had before this probably was about to here. It was only about 49 inches wide, and the bucket was 48 or inches or so. Fold down ROPS, armrests, and so it has a clutch, independent PTO. You can get a mid PTO for the, uh, the mid mount mower, snow blower. doesn't have high or low beams though it's on there either on or off horn preheater throttle and your differential lock is down here I really think this tractor has stellar quality to it it's it's been very reliable it's very rugged it does everything I want it to do I, I wanted a small tractor like this because the cows are underneath the barn it's a bank barn and I can easily get under there to clean the cows out the loader here has a, a full length frame on it and so that that leads me to one of the things I hate about this tractor is it just seems like the bolts work themselves on a basis. I've lost a couple of bolts out of the loader and so I, you know I did check it I did tighten it and then lo and behold the next thing I knew I was missing I think five bolts and then I was missing a couple more so probably it cost me about a hundred dollars worth of grade 8 hardware. Um, I had to buy a tap because I had to tap out one of the holes into the frame. Uh, it must have worn itself loose or something. There was actually two of the holes I had to tap out on the other side. So that was a real pain. So grade 8 bolts, metric of course. And then uh, you know all those all the associated things that, that would go with having to tap out the, the frame, the cast iron frame on this tractor to put new bolts in so I can't emphasize enough that going around and tighten and ship on a pretty regular basis is is super important 
and you know I've had I've had people the wheels fell off and you know they don't they don't cover it it's not under warranty so if, if you don't tighten up the bolts it says all over it to tighten everything up periodically every 10 hours or so I really I don't think that I know a person who does that and I generally don't have troubles with other tractors but uh, three Mahindras I've had they two of them uh, are renowned for the bolts just working loose so what I do now is I just go take the bolt out and put a thread locker on it and put it back in and then it seems eventually you get to all the bolts and they stop they stop coming loose so I don't know what that's all about but I, I do hate it so the one down thing about the Mahindra tractors is the stupid bolts are always loose This does have halogen lights, so the lights are definitely better than they used to be. I put tubes in these tires because these are the front tires are kind of small. They're only 23 by 8.5, 12. So they're basically garden tractor tires on the front. The back tires are loaded, which is, a, is really essential to have uh, your tires weighted down. So you can't really put wheel weights on them because there's no, there's no place to fasten them on there. Some of the tractors have holes for wheel weights, but that's really not an option. So you're stuck with loading the tires or some sort of weight on the back. So I've got this weight box full of rocks, which works. Um, but you really want to make sure that you've got something on the back because uh, these little tractors, they they're really uh, are unstable without adequate ballast on the back. The problem I had really early on, I was down as far away from the farm as I could be down in one of the back fields. And I shut the tractor off and it wouldn't start. And then I, I couldn't figure it out, and so I crawled underneath. There's a safety switch. You can see it hanging right there. And then right there, I just made a jumper and plugged it back in. And I tucked it up under the hydraulic lines. And what that does is you have to have the brake on to start it. But there's one on the clutch, so you have to push the clutch in anyway. So that one's still there, but um, anyway. That was, that was just one problem I had early on, but that was my fault. It wasn't a Mahindra fault. It's just a stick or something came up and unplugged it and bent the connector. I really don't want to be one of those guys who makes a three minute video into a 10 minute video. So there's not a lot to say about it. The maintenance is easy to get to the motor. It has been really well, really good. Um, it starts all the time, uh, runs really well, picks up and puts down everything I want it to. It hasn't failed on me as far as things I want it to do. The old gripe that I have with it, there's actually two. One, I think the turning brakes on the same side as the go pedals. Stupid, which goes along with I hate the forward reverse treadle pedal. I like the, the two pedal with the brakes on the other side. So that's kind of two things, but it's really only one. And then the other thing that I don't like about them, uh, it just seems like the bolts are always working loose. But, uh, you know, it's it's metal. It's, it's, uh, it seems like it's pretty good quality. It's Mitsubishi Japan and they have a good reputation. I, I've had several tractors that were built by Mitsubishi and I've always had good luck with them. So the Max, uh, the dealer tells me that they, they sold a pile of these and you know, he's been a family friend for a long time. So a lot down there, then I come back another time and they're all gone. So, you know, they're, they're a good selling tractor. They're kind of, uh, and in between, between the subcompact and the re and the regular compact, so they they are still pretty small. The other the other thing about Mahindra tractors is I don't know what they do with their paint, but they tend to turn purple after a while. Not purple, pink. They tend to turn pink after. A while. Then the last thing about these tractors is the paint fades out, and you've probably seen pink Mahindras out there. Fortunately, uh, you know I have international tractors, and this IH Red is an exact match and it's very durable and it works great so this tractor the loader the, the tops of the loader the grill guard this down here has all been repainted and I, I think it came out pretty well and hopefully I don't have to redo it again anytime soon but you know as far as controls or good ergonomics you got your little cell phone holder and your little 12 volt power port and your cup holder uh, it's super comfortable super capable and if i had to buy it again i would because the price point between this and the b series is pretty substantial and you know us us poor you know we work hard for our money and you want to get the best bang for your buck and 
I think Kubotas are a great tractor. I think they build really good equipment, but uh, they were priced right out of my range. And the Mahindra dealer was way nicer than the local Kubota dealer. So it was pretty. It was a pretty uh, easy decision to make. But, you know. So hopefully this video has been helpful. I appreciate you watching, and I'll catch you on the next time.